this week on Hermitcraft. Ew! 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 Nice! What? Welcome to the Hermitcraft Recap. My name is Pixorifs, our writer is Loy XP, and what indeed. I hope you like the mayoral shenanigans from last week, because we have more of that coming, with Good Times with Scar, Stress Monster, False Symmetry, and maybe Joe Hills, all now running for the position on the Diamond Throne. Which one of them will get there the fastest, only time will tell. But for now, let's take a look at all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Hermitcraft server this week. Starting with Azumavoid, who reaches the red level of button, then quickly abandons it for the green team privileges. Popping back to his jungle base, Azuma discovers his own colours not showing, what with the concrete blast chamber blasting a little too well, to the point of self-destruction. The tweaks help bring it back to functioning, but that does make him think of less destructive coloured materials, which is where the new wool farm comes in, or at least it will, once the construction on the new honey tower is done. The cement powders still get some love when X makes a decorative concrete conveyor for the concrete shop they're running. While in the area, he also signs up for the reporter job to interview a mumbo, which we of course covered in last week's episode. It smells vaguely of honey. You put that in your resume. I mean, just have a sniff. Mm -hmm. As for his admin duties, we find out that the Hermitcraft server is now running a newer version of the Mobheads data pack. So from here on, there's actually two sets of mob heads circulating the server, the antiques and the new ones that do actually drop from random kills. Here, this is the bat head, which is kind of cool looking. Well, this was the original bat one, and then now we are here. And we're willing to bet Hypno got those bat heads from working on his underground iron farm. This is more or less his first time trying a post-village and pillage golemancy, and it goes pretty smoothly for everyone involved, except of course the golems. But you know who will really get some mileage from the newer textures? Perhaps the same zombie who can make a snail out of some andesite. Zombie Cleo, having now finished the building of the terrarium for her zoo, and the drowner pillar out front, dives back into armor stand sculpting. But duty calls and she has to take a break to update the Herald with a hot take on the Mumbo Jumbo interview. What do you eat your cereal with? A spoon! Genius! Why had this reporter not thought of cutlery before? No longer will my hands be soggy, oh dear. How would you sneak someone with a oh, you know what? That's how we do it. Forks for no one! A more mobile armor stand fiddling comes with ZAP, even if his situation is more armor jumping than standing. Not thrilled about keeping his chest plates in chests, Zed rigs up a few mannequins to pop up out of the ground at the press of a button. He calls it his water closet, so I guess it doubles as a washing machine as well. It flippin' works! Oh yeah! In a cute nod to his pre-Hermitcraft days, Zedaf also starts encasing his crop farms in a green glass dome, though that's a project too big for one episode. But while Cleo makes her exotic cryptids, a much more lively animal is on display at Tango Tech's place. The Ravager-based teleporting system from last week gets a visit from the admin fairy, and is finally capable of launching Cub fans great distances. Try I'm gonna try I'm nervous. Right, so what you gotta do is not that. Absolutely not that. <laughs> wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I'd wiggle. Get Jump it! In. No! Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh my gosh, that one worked amazing! Not done launching things into things, Tango constructs a cartoon rocket at the top of his fireworks crafter and rigs up his Animaniac's water tower to spit out chickens out of the side of it, only for them to land gracefully in a fire. It's not even the worst thing he did to the birds this week, as the boomers make quick work of Alan the woodpecker when hired to do so by Iskal. Oh, wow! Bird gone. With their primary predator gone, giant insect life resurfaces at good times with Scar's place. The oversized invertebrates are the supposed final touch to the magical village of cat-headed dum-dums, of which, by the way, there are none left. They all perished from woodland zombies, making Scar repopulate the area from leftovers. The fresher hamburger people are locked up in the magic houses for their precious trades. Being this good with people, no doubt, will make him a grand mayor, or at the very least a very convenient one for people and B-dubses who don't like to stare at mycelium that much. I do, I do, I do dislike this mycelium. I really do. Yeah! I mean, couldn't that be a first order? No mycelium, all grass. Beautiful grass, not just normal grass, beautiful grass. Scar considers it, but doesn't put up the flyers just yet. False symmetry, on the other hand, is all up in the maps, pushing for her own election. Fan art based ones, even. That's how you know she's with the masses. This little bit I'm standing on, oh, I get it, I get it. 
I give myself like a, uh... <laughs> guys, I'm a villager. <laughs> To help fund her campaign, False dries up a new room under her terracotta store just so she can put a smelter in there and provides glazed variants on the go. Her Space Blaster base gets some love too, though some of the decorations make it look like it can distribute Wi-Fi. It is she too who first discovers that the green team waiting room has been turned orange. That is the wrong colour. Oh no. The citrus wallpaper turns out to be courtesy of iJevin. He actually reaches quite a milestone this time by completing the last of the villager crop farms of his ocean circle. Now eyeballing an even bigger expansion for the place, Jevin takes over an ocean monument to serve as his prismarine supplier. The raid goes quite smoothly and the farm is built while the mob drops of other grinders go into the mob drop shop in the commercial area. You'll find quality monster bits at reasonable prices under the giant skull and crossbones. I think our shop is good to go. I'm going to let the server know and we'll move on. XB Crafted gives us some nostalgic Prismarine vibes as he explains the DNA of his base. And we don't just mean the double helix centerpiece in the middle. In fact, the colour scheme of his new floating island grabber takes a lot of inspiration from his classic Season 3 base, which was one of the first converted ocean monuments in the server's history. The ripples are still being felt elsewhere too, as XB points out a Guardian supply shop in the Season 3 world download that Impulse has paid homage to in this season's shopping district. Um, I do have a plan for the top. The island is staying. The, the, the floaty island is not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, I've had a, f a few comments, people saying, get rid of the, the floating island, it looks whatever. It's not going, trust. Taking a break from the base, he works on decorating the modern house where Vintage Beef has recently delivered a grand piano, adding an artificial water feature to the front and a relaxing private pool in the backyard. Beef's pianos are in popular demand, although considering the theme of Tango's bass, he probably wants it so he can drop one on somebody. But the music store is turning enough profit for Beef to afford a backyard pool of his own. He also spends some time giving his underground farming area a makeover, including a stairwell decorated with the wandering trader's llamas. Those aren't his only animal antics this week. Visiting Iskal's base, he overfeeds the giant woody woodpecker, aka Alan, which causes a bit of a mess, and in an attempt to steer Corallus away from the beaches between them, he finds and ropes off an innocent turtle egg on the nearby shore with concrete caution tape. Corallus, you can't do anything about this, right? This is, this is nature. Restricted area, natural habitat. What do I do with this guy? Corallis has more hooligan mischiefs to deal with. The highways haven't been up a day, but the support pillars are already covered in graffiti. A skyscraper build allows him to do that on a much bigger scale, as well as helps to conceal the creeper farm Corallis wanted for himself. Some of these roads will go into the jungle and tie his construction site to Azuma's neck of the literal woods, which is very visible from his spot now that server performance has been upped and the render distance has been increased. It, as well as the lighthouse build and a tugboat accompanying it, is also looking very fine with the shaders. What of course is not as fine is paying an extra diamond block just to unsubscribe from a service you already use a diamond block to subscribe to. I have unsubscribed, Evo. <laughs> Such a troll. The bamboozles are just beginning, as Etho picks out the recipients of his lifetime glass offer and decides that everyone on the server deserves all the grey glass panes he can sneak into their empty containers. Some of these, I think maybe he's gonna grow to expect it though, so maybe we just want to put a couple pieces in, you know? He also starts offering gardening services, which the hermits can subscribe their friends to for a small finder's fee, then their friends can unsubscribe with a diamond block, making this a pyramid scheme only slightly smaller than cub fans. Joe Hills may be running the long game with his dog catcher campaign, but that just means he's got plenty of time for ancient architecture of his own, terraforming the cliff at the base of his Tower of Hercules lighthouse and detailing the outside with stairs and indentations. It looks all the more impressive at night, which is a shame because that's also when the drowned can spot you. Ooh. And a bubble column and a trident zombie are now gonna immediately kill us. I don't know what I expected. Impulse SV isn't afraid of the water and devotes another wall of the flooded basement below his futuristic pyramid to a sugarcane farm which produces some oddly satisfying mathematical coincidences. Oh, look at that! <laughs> Wait, a perfect nine stacks. What is happening in this episode today? And more sugarcane than a hopper can handle. He's just done setting up a clock to harvest it at midday when he notices the local newspaper seems to be advertising a rival concrete shop. The real one? Not that fake one. What does that mean, fake? What is? 
Theirs was made with duplicating TNT. One shop that doesn't need a printed ad is XP Crafted's Redstone Shop. Once B-double-O is done rebuilding it, the place advertises itself. Designed with what B-dubs himself calls intentional madness, the Red Zone looks like the workplace of an eccentric inventor. And at least it's surrounded by beautiful green grass, which is one reason B-dubs plans to endorse good times with Scar for mayor. Uh, well, kind of help increase business. Obviously, inside, empty. Still have to work out the interior, which is going to be a little bit of a nightmare. <laughs> I'll be fine. The rise of opposition gives Green enough reason to construct the Mumbo Mayoral Campaign Headquarters, which turns out to be a beautiful custom terrain island by the side of the commercial district with but a tiny shack to serve as the actual HQ. All the budget for enormous builds clearly went into Green's own base of operations. The Mega Mansion's only room is made into the storage system, and an automated one at that, with hopper filters and even a shulker box unloader. It took quite a bit of iron taken from Mumbo's farm, but Grian makes sure to leave a good tip in AFK'd blocks, as well as just a little bit of himself. Plus, he steals Tango's door, so that's some redstone components into the mix. Since this is broken, now normally I wouldn't touch anything quite as complicated as this. I mean, this is insane. But you know, people have let me know that this has got to be rebuilt anyway, and so this is probably the only opportunity where it will be absolutely okay for me to take this door. Cubfan has a much more eccentric take on a storage area. Instead of feeding the system via inventory management, he opts for the good old giant hole in the ground you throw your most treasured possessions into a la Road to El Dorado. It might not work when the stars aren't in position for it, but it's worth a shot. The interiors, however, come pricey, and to keep placing these riches around, Cub will require a much larger supply of gold. Of course, the nether roof is freely accessible, but despite golden tickets in slime shops, Cubfan puts together his own gold farm in the red skies to provide for his bling bling. Tripling down on the storage areas, Mumbo rigs up an enormous array of chests for his regulation size industrial area and starts filling it up from the sugarcane farm, pausing only to wonder why his neighbor is surrounded by cats. What? What? What's, the, what's he even doing? But since said neighbor hasn't been distracted for at least five minutes, Mumbo rigs up a series of dispensers to guarantee a pumpkin lands on Iskel's head at some point. And you know what that means? Hermit challenges. On the way, they fly over Stress Monster's base and interpret her potion factory chimneys as a signal that she wants to be challenged. They are surprised when this turns out to be true. Well, I've never seen someone have so many challenges burn sticks in my life. Look, this is the, she's got nine challenges burn sticks, mates. Uh, Both in capitals put stress yeah <laughs> we are here yeah we are here just say we are here, we are here. oh my goodness what is she gonna think <laughs> i don't know oh no you know what this is hermit challenges face oh oh <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> she, <laughs> she it. <laughs> nice <laughs> In the ensuing chaos, Iskel plays the Uno reverse card on Mumbo, challenging him to do whatever Iskel's challenge was, and Stress is challenged to run for mayor. Mayor Stress! <laughs> All right. It's not the first responsibility Stress has had thrust upon her this week. The first was a pile of diorite left on her doorstep with a sign declaring it to be her problem. Stress, in turn, drops it off with Rendog, so tune in next week for an update on the Pass the Diorite game. In the meantime, she's been working on a glass factory of sorts, full to the brim with librarians who'll trade her for glass shop stock. The twist is that the whole thing is underwater on the border of a swamp and ocean biome, making for a lush aesthetic and probably some very confused villagers. Stress takes her sudden entry into the race for mayor in her stride, but the slogan she plans to run with is Get Gorgeous, and she decides to hire a campaign manager in the form of Good Deeds Iskalman. When Iskal isn't helping Stress's bid for the Diamond Throne or discussing the explosive properties of Diorite with the Boomers, he's got some more controlled explosions on his mind. The creeper farm he created a facade for last week needs the functional parts installed, which means darkened platforms, lots of trapdoors, and herding a whole heap of cats. As I was saying, more cat babies. Yes, nice. And then the plan is to just seed them down. What? <laughs> what? What's, the, what's he even doing? And finally, there's Rendog, who has bounced back from the unexpected demolition of his house and possessions. He's made some improvements to the big logs infrastructure, terraforming a Badlands plateau below the blimp shop, and installing item auto sorters at the tree farm itself. He's even had a bulk shipment of gunpowder from Grian's pesky bird deliveries, although his dark side shows itself when he goes to pay the bill. 
so at least something good has come from all these weird dreams and moments of darkness so far in the season. And speaking of the dark side, the Star Wars theme comes out in full force as he starts on a new base, a Tatooine-inspired homestead in a branch of the Badlands. We will watch his career with great interest. And that's about it for this week's recap. Our writer is Loy XP, and my name is Pixorix. My survival guide series just reached episode 300, and I gave a world tour that's also my first ever 360 degree video. You can find that link in the end screen theater. Don't forget to leave a like while you're still here, and subscribe so you won't miss future recaps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.